line. Hoo-hoo! Did you know? Pina Park was once part of Super Mario Sunshine's hub world and not a stage. Not only are there unused portals in the park that link to the Noki Bay and Pianta village levels, but the park also has an object dictating where Mario lands after leaving a stage. Delfino Plaza has this same object for when players re-enter the hub. The area was likely recycled into a stage due to the game's rush development, which was hastily wrapped up to help sell GameCubes. Another unused idea seems to be that Yoshi was able to talk at one point. While footage doesn't exist, a drawing done by a correspondent of the UK's NGC magazine hinted that Yoshis could talk in footage shown to the press. Speaking of Yoshi, Sunshine was once planned to have a wearable Yoshi head for Mario that would spit out water. This was a concept developers thought about adding multiple times, and at one point they even considered having water shoot directly out of Mario's mouth. An unused Yoshi nozzle can still be found in the game's files, indicating this idea got further in development than previously thought. The game's director, Yoshiaki Koizumi, also wanted to include a water rifle for Mario, but felt it might cause age ratings issues in America. He was also afraid that consumers would see it as a gun, so some changes were made. Producer Takashi Tezuka stated, Although we call it a water pistol, we tried to design it so that no associations could ever be made between it and actual weapons. So we were trying to design the weirdest and funniest gadget, which turned out to be a water tank you wear on your back. A pistol and a severed Yoshi head weren't the only ideas developers had for different flood attachments. They also considered having a nozzle resembling a firework or a sprinkler, but in the end, scrapped them in order to fine-tune the four types of nozzles in the final game. Interestingly, the hover nozzle seems like it barely made it into the game. This is because the team felt it made the game too easy in some parts. In order to balance the game's difficulty, they removed Flood from the Mario action stages to give players more of a challenge. All in all, the team considered around 10 different nozzle attachments, meaning more than half of them were cut. One of these nozzles is actually referenced in unused text in the game's files. The so-called reverse nozzle, which the game points out as a temporary name, would have shot water behind Mario. The text also suggests it would give Mario a speed boost in races. It's possible this nozzle isn't just alluded to, but is still in the game's data under the title Dummy Nozzle. By loading the Dummy Nozzle through hacking, we can see what might have been. It's possible the idea was consolidated into the Turbo Nozzle, or was scrapped because it made aiming difficult. The unused text also suggests the reverse nozzle would break after some use, where it would be retrieved by a character named Rowney, who was possibly a human tourist that Mario would rescue. Cut dialogue also suggests the mayor would encourage Mario to help get a 5-star tourism rating for Delfino Plaza, possibly by cleaning up the plaza. The idea of using water in a Mario title came to Koizumi very early on. The team wanted to expand upon the options for the player, and used Mario's movement from Super Mario 64 as a base. When Koizumi first held the GameCube controller, he imagined using the right trigger as a water pistol, and the concept evolved from there. Koizumi wasn't the only one impressed with the GameCube controller. In a talk with Nintendo, Miyamoto stated, Get accustomed to the GameCube controller because 10 years from now, this controller will be the standard. Ironically, in the game's re-release on the Switch 18 years later, Sunshine wouldn't be fully compatible with the GameCube controller. The graffiti system may have been the first feature in the game that Nintendo experimented with, going as far back as Mario 64. In an April 2002 Famitsu interview, Miyamoto stated, The game really started once we had the graffiti system. Actually, during Mario 64's development, we had a completely blank Goomba. We had a plan to let players paint a face on the Goomba. From there, we conducted a variety of experiments. This eventually led us to where we are now, where we have given the player a lot of freedom, and they can do things such as erasing the graffiti off the road in the town. Relics of the team's experiments can be found in the game's data, such as unused pollution maps. Some of these unused pollution maps included notes by the developers, while others are creepy images featuring enemies. One of these pollution maps even features the Japanese word for stupid written on it. When Koizumi first approached Tezuka and Miyamoto about his ideas for Sunshine, he was met with some resistance. Changing Mario's clothes was controversial, but in the end, the duo gave Mario a short-sleeved shirt. Fifteen years later, Koizumi would get his wish of giving the player more clothing options with Super Mario Odyssey. 
Galaxy. Sunshine would be a continuation of Koizumi's approach to sandbox gameplay in Mario games. This style, previously seen in Mario 64, is described as having the player explore a set environment while giving them an objective to complete. It was inspired by Box Gardens, or a Hakoniwa in Japan. Box Gardens focus on creating a miniaturized landscape and containers, often creating a sense of realism within them. Koizumi would again return to this style with Mario Odyssey. In order to get the island aesthetic right, the team examined travel brochures and pictures from island resorts, and even invited travel agents to Nintendo to discuss the resort aesthetic. Koizumi stated that some employees even took it upon themselves to research tropical life by taking vacations in Southeast Asia on their own dime. Koizumi made some of his own contributions, like physically sculpting a clay model of Isle Delfino, which helped the team visualize the island and the locations within it. Looking at the sculpture, it seems there were several changes between how Koizumi initially envisioned the island and its final look. The airstrip may have been a separate landing pad originally south of Delfino Plaza, not northeast. The white marks on the clay model might also indicate that ten levels were initially planned. Looking through the unused stage names, it seems there are several unused entries. One of them is called Scale Map, which could have been used for testing, or was a cut stage. There are also several entries that are reserved for levels, 19 in total. In an interview with Nintendo, Koizumi stated that Animal Crossing scriptwriter also helped write the dialogue for Delfino's residence. By comparing the staff role for the original Animal Crossing and Mario Sunshine, it seems this person was Makoto Wada, who also worked on series such as Star Tropics and Punch-Out. Possibly as an homage to Animal Crossing, a gyroid is present in the texture sheet for the waiting room, but is unused in the final game. Several colors of the Pianta tribe can also be found unused in the game's code. Most of the cut colors are similar to colors that were used, or are very dark-skinned. It's possible the team wanted to avoid any racial controversy, so the dark Piantas were removed from the game. Early screenshots of Mario Sunshine show some of the unused colors in action. Other ideas were scrapped during development. In trailer footage shown off at Space World 2001, a soccer ball can be seen in Isle Delfino. Looking through unused data for Sunshine, the soccer ball can be found along with a goal, which even has an animation for when the player scores. Between the trailer footage and unused animation, it's clear this idea got quite far into development. Miyamoto has stated, Game creators in general are putting so many mini-games in games today. I'm concerned that they're spending too much energy on these extra features and not enough on the larger game. Exactly why it was cut is unknown, but Miyamoto's quote may suggest some extra content was trimmed from Sunshine in order to focus on the main game. There's also a secret yellow toad under Delfino Plaza that's loaded after unlocking Pina Park. By speaking to him, Mario will say, Arrivederci. and a dialogue box will appear saying, Mario, the princess was taken that way, across the river. Mario will instantly lose all his health and respawn after losing a life. This oddity was fixed in the PAL release. It seems that Toads were planned to wear sunglasses at one point during development. An unused file named canopiosunmegane.bmd can be found in the game, with sun megane meaning sunglasses. Speaking of sunglasses, when Mario is near water wearing his shine sprite shirt, his sunglasses do not appear in the reflection. Toads aren't the only objects hidden from the player's gaze. There are a bunch of bananas hidden above the sky over Delfino Plaza. The bananas can only be found by utilizing Yoshi's infinite flutter jump glitch. There are also some coconuts hidden in Pina Park underground, which normally can't be seen by the player. If Mario is able to move during the Pina Park cutscene, the Noki Boy and Noki Girl are missing body parts. Speaking of mistakes, error handlers are used in the game when the text that was meant to be displayed can't be found. In international versions of Sunshine, characters say, Error, message could not be loaded when there's a mix-up calling their dialogue. In the Japanese version, however, if a character's dialogue can't be brought up, they'll instead talk about the sunlight or their desire to eat some rice. In order to market the game, Nintendo pulled no stops for their main plumber. In the United States, Nintendo broke a Guinness World Record by serving the biggest plate of pasta ever. They gave out 3,265 pounds of pasta a la Mario in San Francisco, where Nintendo fans dressed as Mario dove into the pasta to find prizes, including a trip to Hawaii. Other regions had a tamer marketing plan. In Japan, Nintendo collaborated with Japan Rails by hosting a stamp rally, which rewarded players with one of three unique pin badges, or if they were lucky, a duffel bag sporting the Mario Sunshine logo. In Australia, Nintendo held several meet and greets with Mario, which was announced on their website by Charles Martinet as a disembodied Mario head. 
Did you also know that Sonic the Hedgehog may have been planned as a playable character in Mario Kart Double Dash? Or that Mario 64 made Miyamoto question his son's intelligence? For more facts, check out our videos on Double Dash and Mario 64.